So you've probably seen the list of symptoms of low iron. You're probably experiencing a bunch of them. Maybe you have one or more of the risk factors for iron deficiency. Maybe you've already gone to the doctor and they ran blood work and then casually told you that everything was fine. Your blood results are normal. So is that it? Why do you still feel so terrible if everything is fine? Could there be more to the story? Is it possible that low iron really is the root problem behind all of those crazy symptoms? Yes, it's entirely possible that there is more to the story. So please don't worry, you are not alone and you're in the right place. Today we're gonna dive into the important blood test that you need that your doctor won't order unless you specifically ask. So if this sounds like what you're dealing with, you're gonna wanna stick around to the end of this video because I'll share what tests to ask for um, and how to order these tests if your doctor isn't willing to do so. I'm Crystal Moore and I struggled with severe anemia for years. After feeling like I was dying for so long and being brushed off by my doctors, I finally got mad and that set me on a journey to find answers about how to get my life back. I would love to share the science and secrets about iron and iron deficiency that I discovered. Just click the link in the description and I'll send you a free copy of the iron repair manual that includes a printable list of the blood tests that we're going to talk about today and what each of them means. Okay, so let's get into it. Low iron is the most common nutrient deficiency worldwide. But did you know that routine blood work does not include the test that you need to actually identify iron deficiency? That's ridiculous, right? Most doctors will simply run a CBC or a complete blood count to check your iron levels. The challenge is a CBC will only reveal if hemoglobin is low. Now, low hemoglobin does indicate iron deficiency anemia, but that's the second stage of low iron, and you can be severely iron deficient and struggling with terrible symptoms when your blood test shows that hemoglobin is normal. I'll put a link in the description for another video where I really explain the different stages of low iron and what they mean. So the test that you do need to discover the first stage which is iron deficiency, is called ferritin. Now, for many years, hemoglobin, which is the form of iron that carries oxygen through the blood, was the only marker that was considered important at all in determining iron levels. But science has come a long way in the last couple of decades, and our understanding of iron in the body has changed right along with it. We now know that ferritin, which is the storage form of iron throughout the body, is an incredibly important marker of our true iron status. And low ferritin can significantly affect overall health. The challenge is the nutrition education that doctors receive has not caught up with the advancements in this iron research. So many doctors are simply not aware of how important ferritin is. And that is why it's so important to be an informed patient and prepared to advocate for yourself with your doctor. So you're doing the right thing by seeking out information. Knowledge is power. Okay, so now that we've revealed that there is, in fact, more to the story than what your CBC was letting on, let's make a list of the tests to ask for and what they mean. I'm going to use myself as an example and share which blood tests that I would ask for to get a good understanding of what nutrient deficiencies are affecting my health. So first, there's the CBC, or complete blood count. Now there's a number of things that the CBC will tell us, but for our purposes, um, what we're looking at is hemoglobin. Low hemoglobin means that you have iron deficiency anemia. The next test is so important. Guess what it is? You're right, it's ferritin. Low ferritin means that you are iron deficient. And remember, you can be severely iron deficient and still have a normal hemoglobin level. So these two tests are the most reliable 
and stable indicators of your iron status. Now, knowing your ferritin and hemoglobin numbers tells you what stage of low iron your body is at, and it'll be those numbers that you wanna raise as you work to improve your iron levels. Now, the other iron tests that we're about to talk about tend to fluctuate throughout the day based on how much iron you've consumed or absorbed, but they can be a helpful tool in ensuring that your body is absorbing iron and that your body is safely handling the iron that it has absorbed. So the next test that I would ask for is often referred to as an iron panel. Now the iron panel will include several things. The first that we're gonna look at is serum iron. Serum iron measures iron that is circulating in your blood. The serum is just the liquid that's left over when the red blood cells and clotting factors have been removed. Serum iron should be higher after you've taken an iron supplement or eaten an iron rich meal and lower when you haven't. Now, as a result of this ongoing fluctuation, serum iron does not indicate your true iron status. The next marker on the iron panel that we'll look at is transferrin saturation, which can show up as T-sat or transferrin percent. What does transferrin, what does transferrin saturation tell us? First, let's look at what transferrin is. Transferrin is one of the iron chaperones that our body uses to safely contain iron, and it's the primary carrier protein that we use after iron has been absorbed. You can kind of think of transferrin like an iron taxi that your body sends out to pick up iron that's been absorbed and deliver it safely to wherever it's needed. The transferrin saturation test tells you what percentage of the seats on those transferrin taxis are full. A low saturation percent means that the transfer in taxi isn't full and there are still seats available for any iron that might be absorbed. A high saturation percent means that your transfer in taxis are getting full and won't be able to accommodate much more iron that's absorbed. So the next test um, is closely related to the last one and this is TIBC, which means total iron binding capacity. TIBC is just a measure of the transferrin available for transporting iron around the body. So what does TIBC tell us? If TIBC is high, it means that your body is actively looking for iron and has sent out a bunch of transferrin taxis to pick up any iron absorbed and, and quickly deliver it to wherever you need it. If TIBC is low, it means that your body is not currently worried about iron and has not sent out a bunch of extra transfer and taxis. Oh, okay, so that covers the test that I would ask for to reveal my iron status, but there are a couple of other tests that I would also ask for. These tests will look for deficiencies that very often accompany iron deficiency and their symptoms definitely overlap into what feels like the perfect storm of awful. Now these nutrients work together in our bodies, so a deficiency in one will likely affect our ability to utilize the others. Would you like to know what they are? Okay, the next test to ask for are B12 and folate. These B vitamins are necessary for numerous bodily processes, including nerve function, cell division, the production of DNA and red blood cells. Then the next nutrient that we need to check is vitamin D. Now vitamin D is an incredibly common nutrient deficiency and research has shown us that vitamin D status has a strong tie to iron status as well. And finally, the last test that I would request is magnesium, but it's very important to ask for the magnesium RBC test. Our bodies do a great job of regulating magnesium levels in the blood. So the regular serum magnesium test is not a reliable indicator of your magnesium levels. And magnesium is an important cofactor in many of the cellular and enzyme processes throughout our bodies and magnesium is required to activate vitamin D absorption. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the tests that I would ask for. Now clearly there are other tests that your doctor might wanna look at, but this covers some of the most common 
and overlooked nutrient deficiencies that you might be experiencing. So the next thing that we need to talk about is very important to understanding your blood results. So once you get them back, when you're looking at your results, there's often a big difference between what is considered normal on the reference ranges and what is actually optimal. Now, so many times doctors don't look beyond the normal ranges on blood work to see that their parent, their patient is clearly not experiencing optimal health. For example, if your ferritin test comes back and reveals that your ferritin level is 15 and on the lab report, the normal range is five to 250. So your doctor will probably look at that reference range, consider that a normal result and tell you that your iron levels are not a problem. But current research in the field of iron health tells us that a ferritin level of 15 indicates absolute iron deficiency and will likely cause significant symptoms for the patient. But why is this? And where did these reference ranges come from? The normal ranges provided on lab work were created decades ago by compiling the blood results of a small group of subjects and then simply declaring this as the normal range. The challenge is that approach did not take into account that this group of subjects was likely experiencing deficiencies themselves. So their levels were not necessarily normal or optimal and should certainly not be used as the gold standard for blood ranges. Yet despite advancements in health research and testing, these ranges have not been updated. So if you'll download the Iron Repair Manual, there's a list of tests that we've talked about. And there's also I've also included what is considered normal versus what newer findings indicate that is actually optimal within those ranges. Um, now, finally, the last thing we need to cover is what to do if your doctor won't order those tests or if your health insurance won't cover the cost. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors aren't accustomed to patients being informed enough to ask for specific tests. So they may push back when you ask to order tests that are outside of the things they usually do. The good news is that now we have the ability to take charge of our own health. If your doctor won't order the tests, you can order them yourself and go directly to the lab and have the blood work done. For example, when my mom went to her doctor a couple of months ago, I sent her with the list of the tests to request. And yet, despite being educated in why she needed them and insisting that due, that due to her health history and current symptoms, they were in fact necessary, her doctor refused to order the tests. He actually acted like she was being a bit dramatic for requesting them. But thankfully, she had another option. After her appointment, she went online and ordered her own blood work. Once the results came back, she was able to take those results directly to her doctor and discuss what that blood work revealed. And for the record, she did have several deficiencies that needed to be addressed. So in the description, I'll link the company that I use to order my own blood work and a discount code for my Iron Warriors. Okay, (laughs) all right, that was a lot of information to cover today, but it is so important to arm yourself with this information, uh, understand what each result means so that you can best fight for your health. Now, if this video was helpful to you, Uh, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel. That, That actually does a couple of things. It'll make sure that you know when I add new videos that might help you, but it also helps others who are struggling on this journey to and searching for answers to find this video also. And of course, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I am always here to help. I believe that we are in this together and you don't have to go through this journey alone. Thank you so much for spending some of your day with me, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.